All right guys, so after we have organized all of our clips here, we're gonna go to our performance scene keyword collection. So we're gonna click on performance scenes right here. And again, we have all of our performance scenes that we shot in this music video, whether they were in 24 FPS or 60 FPS, whenever the artist was singing along to the camera, those scenes were placed in the performance scene keyword collection. Now, remember when I told you guys that I wanted you to place the mastered audio within the performance scene keyword collection, it was for this specific reason. What you're gonna wanna do is go to all clips and right next to that, you're gonna have this little, this little drop down right here. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on the song right on the top here, and you're gonna wanna scroll all the way down, click shift and click on the very last clip at the bottom. So now all of your clips are highlighted. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is anywhere within the blue area, you're gonna right click and click new multicam clip, new multicam clip. And I'm gonna name this Bonfice Self-Made Multicam. And make sure that the time code is set to zero and click on use audio for synchronization. Uh, we'll go into the custom settings here. I like to make sure that this is set to 4K and the same timeline resolution that it created within the first video that we went over. And I make all of these settings automatic for the angle assembly, angle clip ordering, angle synchronization. I just make it automatic all the way through. And I'm going to click OK. This can take upwards of 10 minutes, so be patient with it. And what we're gonna create here is a multicam clip. So once that is done rendering, you're gonna see this little clip with four little squares next to it. So what you're gonna wanna do is click on it and you're gonna drag it into your timeline. So here we have our multicam clip in our timeline. So what we're gonna do next is double click on our multicam clip. And check this out guys, this is what is inside of our multicam clip. Look at all these performance scenes that, by the way, are all synced up perfect. So there is zero syncing to do. Final Cut Pro 10 did all of the work for us. So basically how to use the multicam clip is right here on the top left of each and every angle, that's what each of these are called are angles. So each of these little um, sections are angles of our multicam. So if we click on the little monitor right here, that is gonna show this specific scene. If we click the monitor below this, boom, that's a different scene, that's now this scene. We're gonna click on the one, let's say it's the one of the driving scenes, we're gonna click on the monitor, and boom, now we're on the driving scene. So we're gonna go back to the very first scene and I wanna just show you guys how the auto synchronization works on Final Cut. I mean, this is literally life changing when it comes to music videos. So I'm gonna zoom in so I can see the wavelengths and I can already tell that this is synced up because of the spike in the audio of the mastered song as well as in this clip right here. But to make sure that your clips are actually aligned perfectly, you're gonna wanna actually click on the little speaker button here. So when I click on the speaker button here, I'm actually gonna start hearing the audio from the master track. So we're gonna play it back. Today's video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. I've been using Epidemic Sound for six years, whether it's for paid client video work or my YouTube content. My favorite feature Epidemic has to offer is their AI video upload song matching tool. Simply upload test footage of a project you're working on to Epidemic Sound and their AI platform will spit out a long list of songs that match the vibe and pace of your video, saving you hours of finding royalty-free music that fits the vibe of your visuals. Not only do you get a library of thousands of royalty-free music, but you also get access to thousands of realistic sound effects. Click the link below to get a free 30-day trial to Epidemic Sound that can be canceled at any time. No commitment necessary. Now let's get back to the video. So we can hear the mastered audio there, right? So we're gonna unclick that. So on the actual clip that we wanna make sure the audio is actually synced up with, we're gonna click on that right there and make sure that this is toggled as well to make sure that we are actually viewing this specific clip. So when I play this back, So that's the raw audio that we recorded while we were on set for this music video, right? So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to the mastered audio and I'm gonna click this little speaker on the mastered audio. So now the mastered audio speaker is, is enabled and the actual clip audio is enabled too. So we have two audio files enabled. Check this out. 
Now to, to see if your clip is actually aligned, let's actually mess this one up a little bit. I'm gonna pull this too far forward. Now take a listen. Now sometimes Final Cut Pro 10 will do this and they won't perfectly match your audio up. And sometimes it can be a little off, sometimes it's way off. So it's your job to actually go into your multicam clip and make sure that every single one of these performance scenes is perfectly aligned. And this can sometimes take time to do it manually, but taking the time to do it manually, sometimes if some of the clips are off, is still gonna save you hours upon hours in the editing suite when you're going through your footage. So hopping back into Final Cut, as you could see, this audio clip is obviously off. Right here, this multicam is off. And this happens every now and again. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna line up, you're gonna zoom in, and I listen for the initial drop of the music video of the song. So I'm gonna unclick this scene, and I'm gonna go into this angle of the audio track, and I'm gonna play this back. So right there, we hear that beat drop. So we wanna take our scrubber tool and go right over top of that beat drop. And what I do is I click on there and I click M on my keyboard. And that creates a little blue marker. So at this blue marker is exactly where the beat drops of the song at the very beginning. So now I unclick the audio here and I re-click the audio on the real time footage. And I play this back. Whoops. So right there, right here is when the beat drops. So it's right here. So what I do here is I hover over, I click on the clip and I click M. And that creates another marker. As you can see, these two markers are off. They're not aligned. We want these to be perfectly aligned so we have a perfect sync. So I'm gonna click on the actual clip and I'm gonna pull the clip until it snaps into place with the marker on the mastered audio. So now when I play this back and have both speakers on, So that's perfectly synced. And when I turn off the real-time audio, as you can see, Bonfisa's lips will sync with the audio. Boom, and just like that, those two clips are synced up. Now when you create a multicam clip, you're gonna wanna go through every single angle and make sure that the audio is um, synced up for every single angle and every single clip. And what I like to do is let's say there is two other, two or three other scenes within this um, auto synchronization that were just slightly off. All I do is I go to the beginning of the song and in the real time audio and I match up the, the same beat with this marker right here. So this is the initial beat drop of the actual um, beat of the song. So I just keep matching up the clips that are a little auto synced off and I match the the beat drop with the beat drop from the actual mastered version of the audio. So going back in here too, um, basically what I do is I go through every single clip. I keep both of these on and I go through. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually click these back and forth and while the song is playing just to see if it's synced up. So I'm gonna click both of these. So one thing I'm gonna mention is sometimes um, I've heard of people making multicam clips and maybe they don't follow this step by step or maybe something's just up with their Final Cut Pro 10 that day and all of their performance scenes end up on just one separate line. And this is obviously an issue, we don't want that. We want every single separate scene to have their own angle within the multicam clip. So what you do actually is you go to the very top here. So at the very top angle, you click this little arrow drop down and you're gonna click add angle. And what that does is add a separate column here or an angle. So let's say all your clips were for whatever reason all sitting on one angle, you would have to take the clip, manually drop it into this angle, and then what you'd have to do is manually sync the clip in this new angle with the mastered version of the audio and do that for every single performance scene. It's annoying to do. Sometimes it happens with Final Cut Pro 10. I'm not too, too sure why people are having that issue. I've never actually ran into that issue, but um, yeah, just in case you do run into that issue, that is how you troubleshoot that problem. 
So how to get out of our multicam clip is very simple. Right here, I'm just circling over it, there's a little arrow. You click on that arrow and it's gonna kick you back to your timeline right here. So next what we're gonna wanna do is go into our song and we're gonna actually drag the mastered audio right underneath here, okay? So now we have the audio underneath the multicam clip. We're gonna go to the beat drop of the song. We're gonna zoom in. So this is where the song drops. And right here I can see that this is so, kind of off, a little off. So what I'm gonna do is hover over the mastered audio that I just dropped in and I'm gonna click M, click a little marker. So over here I'm gonna hover over top of the beat drop of the song, click on there and I'm gonna click on M. And boom, that creates another marker. So what we wanna do is match those two up and then we're gonna play back to make sure that it's actually synced. Perfect, so that's all synced up. Now next what I'm gonna do is actually mute the multicam clip. So I'm gonna zoom in here and if you hover over top of the clip on the bottom, it's gonna show your decibels. And I'm just gonna take that all the way down to um, completely muted. Another way to do this too is to go into, to just click on your clip and click on the audio tab here, go to volume and drag it all the way down. Until it's completely muted, it'll show a negative infinite sign. So now we're gonna zoom out. And what I'm gonna do with my multicam is I'm actually gonna drag it. There's some blank space right here. We're gonna drag this back until it perfectly aligns with the mastered audio on the bottom. So that lines up. So this is the beginning of our edit. So the next step with a multicam clip is by far the best thing ever and will save you so much time in the editing suite. So let's go to our performance scene area, okay? So let's say at the beginning of the edit, we want the beat drop to be a different beat drop. We don't want it to be this scene, all right? So we're gonna go up into view, we're gonna click on our multicam, make sure you're clicked on the multicam. We're gonna go up to the top right and click the view drop down. And here we're gonna have angles. This is very important, we're gonna click on angles. Boom, check this out. This is all of our multicam clip footage. These are all of the performance scenes for our music video right here. Now what I like to do personally is go into settings and click on nine angles. So this now has nine angles. So every single angle that you see, including the mastered audio, is everything that's actually inside of this multicam clip. So this is exactly what you're seeing in those angles. So we're gonna back out by clicking here. And let's say we want to cut it to a different angle here, all right? So let's see here. So if we maybe don't really dig any of these shots, we click on the little cube right here and it's gonna bring you into this. So I'm gonna click on this scene. I'm gonna see if I like this scene. Now, a big tip here, guys, is do not click play when these angles are still popped up because it's gonna, Final Cut Pro 10 is gonna try to play all of these performance scenes at once and your whole computer is gonna lag out. Like, it will seriously lag out. So we're gonna go back into view and click on angles and it's gonna take it away. So we're gonna play this back. Okay, so let's say we don't like that clip either. So we're gonna go back into view, angles, and let's go into this one. So if you find it annoying going into angles and clicking on a new scene and then clicking out, check this tip out. On your keyboard, click one through nine right now. You're going through one through nine and look, it's changing all the angles. When I click two, it goes to angle two, three, angle three, four, angle four, five, angle five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now if we wanna to get to the angles that are in the different angle setting list here, we have to go actually, we have to actually manually go into angles and click on here, click out of angles. And now we have all the rest of the performance scenes that were filmed. Simple as that, you just click one through nine. So we're gonna go back into our angles because I want to take a performance scene from one of these first eight clips. So I'm gonna go into angles, click it again, and I'm gonna start clicking around here, all right guys? All right, so the first performance scene I'm gonna have in here is gonna be this scene. So I click two on my keyboard and boom. We're gonna make sure this is lined up. 
And then right there, when he goes to the next line, I'm going to hover over that area. So it's right here. So we're going to hover over that and we're going to click another key on our keyboard to switch to another performance scene. Let's try this one right here. Oh, don't like that one. Go to six. Don't like that one. Seven. And then the next line comes. So we're going to hover over that next line and we're going to go to a different scene. Don't like that one. Let's maybe go to a hallway. And then we're going to cut back out from here. Go back into here. And we're going to cut that again. Cut that once more. Don't like that one. Go to seven. Don't like that one. So you guys get the point. I'm pretty much just clipping through all the performance scenes for this music video using the multicam clip. So what I do, and this is the number one workflow technique that I've picked up on over the years and has made my music video edits extremely fast and made my turnaround times extremely fast for music videos in Final Cut Pro 10 is I literally go through the entire music video and I chop the best looking performance scenes throughout the entire video. So I just go through and I make all these different chops all throughout the music video and your music video is gonna look, your timeline will probably look something like this. I'm just gonna do something at random here, take random scenes. So your music video is gonna look something like this, where there's a bunch of chops within your multicam clip, right? And you, this is, these are all the best performance scenes that you chose. So this basically just sets you up so you already have all the best performance scenes chopped. And if you wanna go back and change any of these, you most definitely can, but at least you picked out the best performance scenes to toss in. Now, if there is a performance scene that you're like, oh man, like I didn't get any good performance scene shots for like this section of the music video, all I do is click on that clip and I press M on my keyboard and I make a little marker. And I know that I want to probably try to find a B-roll shot or slow motion shot, which we're gonna go into in the next lesson. But um, for this scene, I just couldn't find a good B or a performance scene shot. So this scene could probably use some love with some B-roll. So I make a little marker there just to, you know, take note of it. And it's something that I can go back on. So that's why I use little markers. And right here too, we can also double click on a marker and delete them. We obviously don't need this one anymore as this marker was only used to sync up the mastered audio with the multicam clip but that's basically a whole multicam clip setup. Um, again, it helps you with chopping your entire music video for performance scenes. And that's what I do every time. I chop every single performance scene from the very beginning of the song to the very end. And after that is when I start adding all my slow motion B-roll shots over top. And the multicam clip ultimately keeps everything super, super tidy because like, look at this timeline. Like, this, this whole row has all of our performance scenes and everything on top will have titles and B-roll shots. And then on the very bottom, we have our mastered audio. So really we're only gonna end up having like three or four lines or rows, which keeps everything so nice and organized.